To get started, we need a derivative. We need to be able to take a derivative of a field. So let's consider a scalar field. A scalar field, and I'll call it S of x and y. Lowercase s, because I don't want it to get too cocky. OK, so let's think then if we had sort of an x, y in the plane of the board, and we're going to plot the scalar field s as sort of a height, we could have kind of a lump, kind of like that. And I'll kind of put a line like this. You've got kind of the feel that's sort of a lump spreading out in space in x and y, and we're plotting s. Okay, There's your scalar field plotted as a height. So the question is, what is the derivative? Right. And well, derivatives, we know, at least at this point, we know a derivative is a slope. If we just had a line, a single 1D plot, the derivative at any point is just a slope. So you could kind of imagine this thing is flat here, and then it goes up. So you could say, well, the derivative here, the slope here, must be small, and the slope here must be big. Right. So the derivative, it depends on position. We have to do something. But that's not too surprising, because we have a function. We have a scalar that depends on position. Its value depends on position. And even in a 1D derivative, it depends on where you are. Right. So that's not so bad. But there's something else that it depends on. Let's look here. So this is what's coming down. Is the slope, it depends on direction. It depends on which way you go. If I go downhill here, then I have a big slope. Let's see, I have a negative slope. Right, if I'm coming down the hill, what if I go up the hill? I could go either way. Right, I have a positive slope. What if I go around the hill? Ah, what if I go around like that, around this hump? Then it's 0. So not only does it depend on position, it depends on direction. So you actually have the case that your derivative of this 2D scalar field is a vector field. Anywhere you go, um, it has a, a, a net, uh, it has a vector, but you have to think in terms of a vector. It depends, the value depends on the direction you're looking. So we need a way to calculate this thing. We want to know, I don't care about direction, what is the total differential? What is ds? How much does ds change? And we've got to think about when I make a move when I move this way or that way or whatever way you want to go. How do we figure it out? What you do is you say it's equal to the partial derivative, which you remember we talked about partial derivatives. You take the derivative of the function, just considering with respect to x, and you hold y and z if there's a z constant. So take the partial ds dx times the move you made in dx. Okay, so if I want to know what's the derivative this way, I move a little bit in x and I move a little bit in y and say, that's the way I'm going. Well, to get it, it's the partial ds dx times that d differential dx plus the partial ds dy times the differential dy. So if you take a look at it, you could imagine, what if you made this dx be uh, a motion of just a unit of 1 in x, and this be a motion of a unit of y in y? You could think of that as sort of like the unit vectors. So let's look at a way that we could write this. What we could say is to find this, we need to use something that looks like this. d dx i hat plus d dy j hat plus d dz k hat, if we had a three-dimensional function. Right now we just have two, so you can ignore this, but I'm trying to be general for Cartesian coordinates. This thing is what we call del. This is the differential operator for fields. It doesn't really multiply fields, it just operates on fields. It's like taking a derivative of a function. You don't multiply the function times the derivative, you just take a derivative. So when you apply del to a field, you're not multiplying by the field, you're just taking the del of a field. So for example, if we have the scalar field s, then del s is ds dx 
i hat plus ds dy j hat plus ds in this case we're being, doing all three dimensions dz k hat like that and this is called is the gradient of the field cuz like we just showed if you imagine and so you're going in some unit direction in these different directions, multiplying by ds dx gets you the change, the little bit of the change in one direction, a little bit of the change in the other, a little bit of the change in the other. If instead of thinking of a differential in a specific direction, if you just do this to the field, what it gives you is a vector pointing along the, the, the maximum change. And its magnitude of that vector is equal to the maximum change. So if we came back down to our drawing like this, it's true that in all these different directions, you can come up with different ds's as you move in different directions. But if you take the gradient, you just get the maximum change straight up. It'll give you the direction and the magnitude. That's what the gradient does. So the gradient is one of the ways to take a derivative of a field. It's the way, applying it this way, just taking the gradient, having applying it directly to a scalar field gives you basically the three-dimensional version of the derivative you're used to. It gives you the three-dimensional gradient of the field.